Hello, Haven Church and Haven friends. This is Pastor Paul. Uh, so much has transpired since we were last together virtually on Saturday night uh, that I wanted to just kind of touch base with you and talk to you a little bit, share my heart uh, as we continue to navigate these uncharted waters of this situation. Now, this morning in the text blast that I sent out to the church, I used the expression uh, that fear is a thief. It'll steal your joy. It'll steal your peace. It will steal a good night's rest. Let me tell you what else fear is. Fear right now is the enemy. And one of the weapons we have against that enemy is knowledge. So let me walk through some things and we'll just, just step through this. Some things that we know. First of all, we do know that the powers that be have deemed this current crisis to be serious enough to mandate some unprecedented restrictions. Um, as Christians, I want to remind you, we're admonished in the Bible that we are to submit to local authorities unless, of course, it infringes on matters of our faith, which this does not. Uh, this is a civic matter. Uh, they're doing their best to uh, lead this state and this nation through it. So therefore, we need to fall in line and do our best to be good, godly citizens. Here's what else we know that our meeting place, because it's a school, is not going to be available for several weeks. And also, as of this morning, uh, there is a curfew that has been implemented that is going to restrict some, some evening movement. Uh, so we are also not going to not only be able to meet on Saturdays, but this is going to also affect our small groups. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to utilize modern technology and we are going to still be able to gather in a virtual sense for most of our small groups. Tomorrow, we're going to send out some details on our plan. We're going to try this again, uncharted waters, but we're going to do our best together uh, to get through this. Now, let me just say, let's thank God that we live in an era where we have these tools because modern technology allows us to somehow stay connected. Even virtual connection is better than isolation. Here's what else we know, that we should use wisdom, all right? Do all the practical measures you can to safeguard yourself, your family, your loved ones against the potential that this virus holds, this potential threat. Uh, this is a, not a time now to be careless or a time to be reckless. Now, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to recognize, listen to me, your faith was made for times like these. Anybody can say God is good when life is wonderful. Anybody can say God is good all the time when things are smooth and there's no adversity. But it takes a depth of faith to be able to say God is good even when I might have to close my business for two weeks. Even when it's probably going to impact my economic situation. Even when life as we know it for at least the foreseeable future is looking very uh, scary. But God is still good. Why? Because your faith is not based on this situation. Your faith is based on the eternal God who has said all things will ultimately work together for good to those that love him, to those who are called according to his purpose, for those that trust in him. Uh, let me reiterate something that I sent to you guys a couple of days ago in an email. There is no script for this current crisis, but we do have scripture. And so I want to leave you with this one. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. Even though this was written about 3,000 plus years ago, this verse of scripture starts with these words. But now, now to truly understand, that means it applied at the moment that Isaiah wrote this, when God spoke it to him, but it also applies right now, on this day, in this moment, in this crisis. Now what? Here's what God has to say. The creator, the one who formed you, listen to me, do not fear, for I have redeemed you from captivity. God's saying, if I paid the price for your eternal soul, would I abandon you now? Absolutely not. He says, I have called you by name. You are mine. We have reinforced this in the beginning of our impact series. This is so fundamental and so uh, such a source of strength for us. And then God says through the prophet, when you pass through waters, floodwaters, not if, 
when. When you do, God says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, those fast moving streams, when it just seems like uh, information and situations are just going at such a pace, we feel like maybe we're going to drown. What has God said? They will not overwhelm you. Now you may have to doggy paddle like crazy, but God says, I'm with you and they're not going to drown you. And when you walk through the fire, those hot situations, those situations that it seems like everything is, is burning around us, he says, you'll not be scorched and the flame is not going to burn you. For I, the Lord says, am the Lord, your God, your personal God. And he ends that verse of scripture in, in verse three, reminding Israel, who this was originally given to, of all the things that he has done. So here's what I want to leave you right now. God called his people to remember who he was in their past so that it would strengthen their faith, alleviate their fear in their present. Think of all God has done for you. Maybe you need to gather your family tonight before bedtime and read Isaiah 43, one through three. Maybe you need to gather them and read the 23rd Psalm. As a family, let's let this time bring us closer together. Let's let God do some things in this that we have never even anticipated, the good that can ultimately come out. But God is saying, remember what I've done and then let that give you strength for my promise today, which is now I'm your God. The waters aren't gonna drown you. The fires aren't gonna burn you. Trust in me. Let me pray with you and let you go. Father, you are faithful and you are good right now. Send your peace to each heart and to each mind. Give us wisdom, Lord. Give us strength, God. Give us compassion and give us childlike faith to put all our trust in you, our good, good Father, who is good even now. I declare this over everyone watching and listening in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. I will see you Saturday in our virtual service. If you need me, reach out to me. I'm here for you. God bless.